Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 193. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now, let's get into the content. This episode was streamed live on YouTube. If you want to make sure to catch the streams, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Enaba in the description down below. All right, so we are here now for the final championship, the final event of Forza Motorsport 3. This is going to be the Class R1 championship. Absolutely awesome that we are almost at the end of this. Um, we have 13 races left. Now, I believe this is, means there's going to be four episodes. We're going to have, like, each of them will have three, but one of them will have four races in. Uh, that four races episode will probably be the last one. Um, we're going to be starting off with Sebring, moving on second to Catalonia, Sedona Raceway, Silverstone, Suzuka Circuit, New York Circuit, Le Mans Circuit, Sunset Peninsula, Road America... Twin Ring Mategi, Magello, Road Atlanta, and then finishing off with Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. Let's get going. All right, let's give this another attempt. Attempt number two. Wilder, Wilder, Wilder. So yeah, our car is exactly one performance point behind the Peugeot. So, hence why we've been put behind the Peugeot. But... Our Peugeot is fucking quick. Fuck me! Come on! Crack on with it. That's very close to the front of the Peugeot there. Yo, Heinz, what up? How are you today? Feeling like we vultures. 
How was your day at work, Heinz? Or are you still at work at the moment? I'm here for the first time. What is this stream about? Uh, it's about morons talking about cars and crashing into walls. That moron being me. I may be a little bit Xeno. I'm joking, Xeno. I'm joking, Xeno. <laughs> Xeno's probably looking up like, what the fuck? What did he say about me? What did he say? up to the grocery store to get some scrummy crisps. Good idea. So one thing I find, right, the UK, right, and America, I think it's America counts in this, have some of the most fucking... Ooh, this is a good tune. I forgot how good this was. Yeah, I think the UK and the US have some of the most boring fucking crisps in the world. Because I've been to other countries. I've been to Turkey. I've been to Greece. I've been to... Well, I haven't been there, but I've imported Polish crisps. They're all so much better. A million times better than the shite that we get here. so far ahead where did the Peugeot go did he just say I'm I'm retiring or something oh they aren't actually behind me just I didn't see them on the mini map at the time This car's definitely borderline Formula One car level performance. Beep, beep. Oh shit. I wasn't paying attention. I thought the uh, driving line would still be there when I look back. Apparently not. Okay. That was funny. <laughs> I just looked forward and. Oh shit. I'll be honest though, the uh, look back camera in this car looks fucking funny as hell. 
Because you've just got this driver that's just like... Doo, 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 doo. Very much looking forward to uh, Motorsport 5. Just because of the fact Mo Motorsport 5 is the first Motorsport game that has like a significant boost in quality. And Motorsport 4 is going to have quite a boost. I'm just excited, excited for all the games, to be fair. Because once I finish with the series, I can officially say I finished every Forza again. Not a lot of people can say that. I finished Forza Motorsport 1, which again, not a lot of people can say that because not a lot of people have, well, not the mental capacity, but just the endurance and the fucking patience for that game. That game has the most clips that I had to delete. I had more clips that I had to delete in that than this, and this had a lot more races. I think I ended up redoing about 50, 60 races in Motorsport 1, as opposed to like 20 in this. Whoa. Change my pitch up, smack my bitch up. Bow. Ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. Okay. Completely clueless as to where the fuck my brakes went. Oh, sorry, Heinz, I didn't see your message. Uh, even FH5. As much as I think FH5 is fucking boring, uh, I am kind of excited to complete that as well. Because I want to be able to. Obviously, 100% completion in those games is a little more difficult. But as long as I've done every event, in my mind, I've completed the game. I've done every event. What more is there to do? So... I'm pretty excited. 
But I think we might actually, by the time we get towards the end of this series, I think we'll be getting close to FH6. Um, but the problem is, if the series finishes, like, if the final episode of Forza Motorsport 8 comes out, even, a, I mean, if it comes out the day before, then that's fine. It just means I have to record and have a very busy launch day. But if there's more than a week between it, that's the end of the Mega Series. So, whatever games releases during the time that I'm doing this, I can play. But I don't want to continue the Mega Series and, like, say, come back to it later on and then play Horizon 6, Horizon 7 and add it to the Mega. I, I want the Mega Series to finish in the state that it is. Once it's finished, it's done. There's no point coming back to it and adding little bits, because the, the hype of the Mega Series is the fact. No, I'm not doing every other <laughs> But yeah, the, the sort of hype around like the Mega Series, the vibe that I want to go for it, is the fact it's there once, and that's it. Once it's done, it's done. We move on to the next Mega Series, which... At the moment, there are a couple of candidates for it. Because obviously, it has to be a game that's a series. It can't just be a one-off thing. So, I'm thinking for the next Mega Series to do um, something slightly different. Rather than completing all the games, I want to do like, um, sort of like a history. If that makes sense. So, I wanted to do every single F1 game from F1 2010 up until the latest game, whatever is at that time. That mega series should take about a year to do, one season. It's a full length race on every single game. Uh, or maybe not, it might be 50%. Grid is a possibility as well, but the only difference with a grid mega uh, grid mega series is um, I haven't played the first race driver grid, so I wouldn't know. Obviously, I could play a little bit of it to start getting a plan for it. So I couldn't say about that. The second one looks like an absolute nightmare to plan a series for because there's no structure to the game it's just complete a couple of events oh you've now progressed complete another couple oh you've progressed again complete another there doesn't seem to be much structure to the event again i haven't finished grid two so maybe there is some form of structure but it, it just seems to be ah here's some events here's some events here's some events thrown randomly Obviously, this one, there's structure. I can plan it, and I can work around it, and I can go in order and whatnot. And that's a lot easier to do for a series to plan than, say, Grid 2. Grid Autosport, uh, amazing to plan. I can do what I want. And there's a lot of variation between what you would see on YouTube because of the fact you pick different cars, you have different teams different objectives so I think that's good um, so grid auto spot I think would be good to do grid 2019 I think could be okay but it would be all over the place a little bit because some of the events there are like one race so you'd end up with like three or four events to do in an episode and then the next episode would be one event for the entire thing. So it, it would be all over the place for that one. Um, the only other one that I could potentially think of that is a possibility. Well, Grid, Grid Legends 
actually makes sense as well. That's a little more structured than Grid 2019. Um, yeah, beyond that, I don't know. It's a potential candidate, but I don't know. Because Grid as well doesn't just start at Race Driver Grid. It goes before that. You have Toka Race Driver and then Toka Race Driver Grid and then Race Driver Grid. So, obviously, it used to be a different game all the way back, and now it's rebranded. So, in, again, in terms of that aspect of it, it's different again. Completely different. I can't be bothered to stop recording for this one, so I'm going all the way to the end for this. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's extremely difficult to actually e explain what I mean um, without actually sort of showing when it comes to the next series though obviously there's gonna be some f1's quite easy you just go through the career mode and you do if i'm doing 50 percent race distance i just do a race for every episode it's an hour long episode every day of me just playing some formula one i stream for four hours eight hours a week doing the f1 games yeah no problem I have a bit of fun. I might get the wheel for all of them, bar the ones that I can't get working. But yeah, obviously I can do that. But it is down to just fuck around and find out. That's literally the vibe for the series at the moment. I think the F1 games would be quite a nice one to do. Because you get all the all the different drivers. By the time it comes to me actually starting that series. Um, I mean, at the moment, all the drivers in F1 2010. The only drivers that are actually in F1 2010 that are on the grid today is Hamilton and Alonso. Because Vettel's retired now. By the time it comes to actually doing that series, I think Alonso will have already retired and it would be down to Mecom. What do you mean? He's doing it all the time. Just not at the moment. Uh, yeah. I need to get my wheels. I need to build like a rig. I want to build a homemade one because I've seen some good homemade ones and I want to do something similar. But I want to get. I want to remove the wheels off this chair use this chair as like the seat um and bolt it down and then I'll just have a sim rig and I'll sit in the sim rig even when I'm playing normal games similar to what Jimmy Broadbent did with his thingy but obviously if I'm doing it homemade it's going to be out of wood and wood, I don't know how wood would hold up. Pun intended. Like a motherfucking outlaw. Five times for the bitches who are in callback. Six times for the kids like me who got ADHD just to. Me and John will need a couple of nurses. Double homicide, kill the beat, and the verses. It's everybody living on the surface. But we came from the underground. Yeah, we deserve what's beef. Beef is when you murder motherfuckers on the beat. Kill them all, kill them all. Nah, nah, what's beef? Beef is brothers dying over shit that never mattered in the first place. Lying in the street, what's peace? Peace is when you leave it in the past so they heal like a cares. When enough time passes, a blast. Kinda like John Wick files like a convict. Fuck around and you don't wanna start shit. Well, come up with the hard shit. All they do is talk shit. You can never top it, boy, just stop. I had drunk, call that HD vision. All these other motherfuckers full of indecision. And I'm murder with precision. I'm gonna be a television. I'm no more under no one of you. It's just a subdivision. Fucking hell, this is quick. Ain't no time to bicker over who the nicest. It's logic, it's obvious, just as the audience, I've got to body this shit. This is such a good song. Uh, yeah, going back to what I was saying before. F1 would be quite a good one. Because it'd be like three weeks of a game, and then for the next three weeks it'd be another game. And then three weeks after that, another game. Three weeks after that, another game. They'd be short mini-series, but it'd be fun to see. Um, and obviously each one I can have damage on and I'll get the sim rig set up 
I'll try and get wheel working on every game. I assume wheel works on all of them. I'll get one of those dry... There's like a hub that allows you to use any wheel on any console. So if I can set that up, I can use that. And then I'll invest in a probably a PS5 Pro with a disk drive around that time because the PS5 Pro will be out by then. And I'll buy all the games on uh, what's it called? PS4 disk. And I'll play 2015 upwards all on PS4. PS4 slash PS5. I even buy the old old F1 games. Like even 23 now. I buy the new ones on disc again. Even though I already have it on PC. Just because the fact is a more uniform experience. La 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 dee da dee da. A good song. Yeah, I an IKEA furniture rig would be cool because it's nice and easy. But that that would be a good idea if IKEA made out of like some of the parts that they have. If they made a sim rig for like a hundred pounds, people would buy it because the expensive ones are like five hundred pounds for like a proper metal sim rig. If they can build, because IKEA furniture can hold with sand some of the talk, just not for as long as you'd expect. They'd sell a couple of, even if it was just like only for Logitech wheels or something like that. Come on. I am thinking of actually doing that rig fairly soon, like within the next two months. So... If I can get that set up, that, that'd be sick. I want to get it set up before F123 becomes irrelevant. Or before I get bored of it. I, I doubt F123 is going to become my most played game on Steam. Quite easily. And do you know what? For a game that I've enjoyed as much as I have enjoyed F123, it deserves it. It deserves my number one spot. Because of the fact that I've enjoyed it so much. I've never been able to... The problem is, a lot of die-hard F1 fans that want this super sim experience don't like it. I'm very much someone that likes 
a fairly realistic experience, but accessible. I like an accessible, realistic experience, and that's what F123 is. It's fairly realistic, but it's accessible. You can play it at the difficulty for you. A lot of games don't get that anymore because there are people that just sweat games out and say, oh, it needs to be harder. It must be harder. There's nothing... No, if it's not harder, I won't buy it because I'm such a snob and I've got my nose up so far up my own asshole. Like, games should have difficulty options and all sorts of settings for everybody. Like... That's why I'm a, I'm a little bit irritated with how Arav has treated F123. Because of the fact that my team... Um, what's it called? It's slightly easier. I've been taken to the PC. <laughs> I am on a computer now. Yeah. Tom said hi and fuck off. Uh, tell Tom I told him... Is a knob cheese. Oh my mind. Oh my mind. Tell Tom he should subscribe and come watch my F1 streams because they're actually quite fun. Tom <laughs> Tell Tom that he should um, fill his shoes with concrete and jump into the river. <laughs> oh, this is the really, really long song name. It's actually kind of funny. Yes, he heard you. <laughs> I think that cut's split open. ADHD means walking skill issue. Mate, ADHD means just life skill issue. That's all ADHD is, it's just a life skill issue. Oh yeah, going back to uh, possible future mega series ideas. So obviously F1 is on the shortlist and I, I really think that's going to be the option. But I think I could also... I'm trying to avoid saying Gran Turismo. Only because I cannot stand the first two Gran Turismo games. I'd put up with three. Four is extremely difficult. And it would be a nightmare. But... Yeah, one, one and two, I'd refuse to do. So then it doesn't feel like a mega series. Oh yeah, I'm going to play Gran Turismo, but I'm only playing the last three games in the series. I really speak about F1, but nobody speaks about F2. Because F2 is a feeder series. And unfortunately, it's boring as fuck. Like, they get all these inexperienced drivers to race each other. But they're barely racing, and they don't advertise it that much. There's no way you can watch it unless you pay for Sky Sports F1, which doesn't make sense. Like, why the f 
it, it, it makes no sense. It's boring as hell. I hate Sky Sports, if you can't tell. Um, yeah. I don't think I'll do the Green Gran Turismo one. Uh, I will probably... The other ideas that were floating around uh, is... I was thinking of maybe doing a MotorStorm series. It doesn't feel like a mega series because there's not a lot of games in the MotorStorm, MotorStorm series. I mean, there's literally MotorStorm 1, Mo uh, MotorStorm, Arctic Edge... Uh, which would be a PS2 title. There's MotorStorm Pacific Rift, and then MotorStorm Apocalypse. So there's four games. Um, so it, it wouldn't feel like a mega series, but there is the potential that I could do the MotorStorm series, which would be awesome because they're all technically classics and they're old games. So I'd be playing through quite a few of the just old games. I wouldn't even get a chance to go into a more modern title. I, I'm listening. I'm all ears for ideas for this. Burnout series is a potential. The only problem with the Burnout series is the only one I've played is Paradise, and it's really fucking long to actually complete Burnout Paradise. I platinumed it. It's actually one of the few games I've platinumed on PlayStation, but it took a long time to do that. Um. And a majority of it was just completing the game was what took up a lot of the time for the Platinum. But burn Burnout is a potential. Um... I don't get that excited over Burnout though, so I don't know whether it'd be... Um, whether I would pick it or not, but... I mean, obviously it's, it would be put on the shortlist along with every other series that's out there, and I'd have to plan it. Um, I'm trying to think of other games that are in series as well. Oh, the WRC, I for completely forgot. So, WRC was also a potential candidate. WRC 1 through 2 generations. So, that would be 11 games. And I'm thinking of it. Well, to be fair, if I did that, it would be 1 to 11. 11 being generations. But then there'd also be two bonus series. There'd be um, Power Slide, which is like a weird sort of Mario Kart vibe race, top-down racing game. It's actually quite, pretty fun, so I think it'd definitely be worth playing as part of that series. And also Sebastian Loeb Rally as well. Another uh, game that I'd add to the WRC series, because technically... Um, that is leftover assets from... Well, not leftover assets, but it's basically... Uh, what's it called? WRC 5. But, yeah. The, the planning is all there. There's all sorts of different ideas. It's just what would work. I, actually, now that I think about it, WRC might not be a good idea because it's just... All of the games are copy and paste of each other for like three games, and then it changes, and then it's three games again. TDI Power. Yeah, I mean, 15 episodes for Most Wanted 2005. Um, Most Wanted 2012, you just keep doing events until you're number one. Pretty straightforward. Um, and then I'd do a couple of the DLC events. I don't know. Um, Need for Speed 2015, you just complete all the final. I know there's a final, like, Jim Carner race or something that's like the big thing for Need for Speed 2015. 
play that and that's game done. Because those kind of games, I, I think for the Need for Speed series, I would just be completing the story. I wouldn't be going for 100%. Um, 2017, I just, you know, complete the Outlaws rush, whatever it is. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Need for Speed 2019. Need for Speed Heat. Just finished a game. Um, Unbound. It's the same story again. It could be quite interesting, actually, to do them all. But I think I would do majority of them on PC because a lot of them are. What the fuck? Jesus Christ. A lot of them are, are available on PC. Um, obviously, there'll be some sketchy workarounds because a lot of them now aren't on digital stores. I'd have to do some PC modifications because I'd have to do disc copies, but... I actually quite enjoy Unbound. I think Unbound was a lot more enjoyable during the gameplay than Heat was. Um, I haven't finished it because the problem is I refuse to pay for it. But now it's on EA Play. I just haven't got around to actually playing the full thing. But I, I completed the first week. I got eight hours of playtime out of it. I enjoyed the game. There's a decent amount of content in it. Maybe not day one buying it, but... There is a decent amount there to do. Yeah. I think Heat was pretty bad, though. Because that thing was completed very quickly. Yeah, fuck you, Audi. Wait, I'm an Audi. Uh-oh. Yeah, gameplay-wise is better than Payback. But uh, I quite enjoyed the fact that Payback had all these different types of cars and had different storylines. Like, they were linked, but there was, like, three different storylines. I really enjoyed that aspect of Payback. And I think that should... For the next Need for Speed, I would love to see them follow three main characters. Don't give us customization. Don't make us the main player. Give us three characters. Three people. The problem is, I find a lot of the time, story games where they make you the main character are really fucking bland. Because there's no story to your character. It's just you're playing and taking part in this open world. That's why I think GTA and Red Dead do so well. Because they've made the character, they've given a character a backstory, and you play as this character. Even Fallout 4, right? Technically, you are a character and you have a backstory, right? But it's sort of very in the middle. It just about gets away with it. But you have this backstory, you play through this backstory, and then there's all this lore in the game. But games like GTA, games where the character is decided for you completely, yeah, 100%. Any game that I've played where the character's decided and you have no impact on it, you have no impact on how the character looks, you have no impact on how the character story goes. It just happens. It's a lot more entertaining than just, oh, you're the driver. And, you know, oh, you've done a good job. Or you're, you know. We look at Need to be Payback. The story in that was fucking great. That was a really good story. You couldn't customize your character. You were just that character. GTA, great example again. Every GTA has had a very good story. Red Dead Redemption, very good story. But you know what's in common with all of those? 
is you're playing as a character that's already been decided for you. That is what makes a good video game. You're playing this story. You know, I think the Horizon stories would have been s so much better if you were playing as a driver and you followed the story. You did 10 events following the story of a driver of the Horizon Festival. Yeah, there may not be much of a backstory or whatnot, but you're following this short adventure of this driver that's doing something. For example, the movie star, right? They got a, a famous lookalike. And then, ah! This driver here, and you become that driver for whatever, and you follow this storyline through 10 chapters of playing the stunt double of a movie star. But they could add some backstories and whatnot to it. That'd be good. Um, I can only think of Horizon 4 examples. Say British Racing Green. Make it that there's a Horizon driver at the festival that's a collector of all these iconic, historic racing cars. I think that was what that one was. And you play as that character. It would be a huge improvement. Because the, the problem with story games, and uh, I've realized I've gone onto a rant. I'm going to continue this rant because it is rant time. Any time there is a character, the, the player shouldn't get a say in a character's story. Because as soon as you add that, it brings the quality down of the story dramatically. Like, there should be basic options, maybe. But you should be playing as this character that's been decided already. Ryan Cooper! Yeah. Horizon 4 was pretty good. Anyways, where was it going? Oh, um... Yeah, I think doing the Need for Speed games as part of a mega series, I think that would actually be a good idea. That is actually potentially a good show. But I need to see if I can get the older games running on. Uh, what's it called? On PC. Because another issue is I need to get every single, before I do the F1 series, I need every single F1 game in my possession before I play it. I'm currently going through Forza. I have every single Forza game in my possession right now. That would be a good idea. But that is a predetermined character and a predetermined story. And that is a million times more enjoyable than a non predetermined story. Far Cry, for example, you're playing as this character, but the character is. No. It just doesn't work. And Far Cry is one of my more enjoyable games, but I think Far Cry, if you were playing as a set character, that there was an actual storyline and an actual progression and not just, oh, you're, here you go, here's an island, you take over, and you liberate. Yeah. As soon as you give um, the player freedom 
to complete the story in the way that they want, it no longer becomes a story and it's just an open world aspect game. You just do whatever you want. Your storyline loses points instantly. Like, no, any game that you give freedom to, even GTA, right? Even though it appears as freedom, you don't have freedom in the storyline. You can just piss about between missions, but you then have to go to the missions to progress your story. In GTA, there isn't a story mission where it says, right, well, you need to liberate two or three cities before you can then continue the story. Well, now that's just a fucking boring ass storyline. Every single part of the story mission is scripted out. It's made that way. It's subtle, but it works. And that's why GTA is such a successful series. Obviously, when it comes to fucking online, it's terrible. It's, it's so weird. So strange. But yeah, I'm, now that you mentioned Need for Speed, that is on my short list. But uh, I definitely have to make sure that every single game is owned before I um, plan it out. Which is why once I start getting towards the end of Forza, I might start collecting the Need for Speeds in the F1 game. In fact, I could start now, realistically. But. I'm probably going to get F1 20... Well, I got 2010 on PC. Maybe I could try and get F1... 2010 to 2014 on PC, but I, d I don't know how I get around getting Steam keys for it. Technically, um, when it comes to those games, you still can't pirate them. That's the issue. However, morally, a lot of people will say that is fine. In the eyes of the law, it's still illegal. Like, any form of piracy is illegal. Even using an ad blog on YouTube or whatnot is piracy. Um, however, it's, it's what people say. They very rarely will you get in trouble for it just because of the fact that it's, you know, it, it's so difficult to police that. But... Again, it's what it's what's morally acceptable. In my eyes, I don't see anything wrong if there's no physical way to obtain a game. If you can't get it through Steam anymore. Yeah, why not? If you can't buy the game anymore through legal means. Yeah. Arr! I'm the captain of this ship. But yeah, for anyone that says using Adblock is not piracy, you're a moron. Because I've already convinced someone else that Adblock is piracy. Who used to think that. Like, the, the fact is, right, YouTube and any platform out there that is free is not free. The only difference... No, adblock is piracy. It's straight up piracy. Using an ad blocker is piracy because the in the thing is, right? People make websites. Oh yeah, they show too many ads. But using ad block is still piracy. The problem is, right? So when you use an ad blocker, you are blocking the revenue stream for a certain site or certain platform. When it comes to video games, right, you, if you're paying cash or paying money in exchange to have access to a video game, that's fine. If you then stop paying cash for that, so say for example, you don't pay money to get your game and instead you pirate it, that's piracy. 
So why on earth would someone think, oh, well, I'm going to go on this platform, right? That doesn't cost me anything, but they use adverts to fund their stuff. Right, well, I want it, but without the adverts. So I'm going to remove that revenue stream. Right? And... Use their site. Right? That's still piracy. You've removed the revenue stream so as to get a product completely for free. Right? What One of the reasonings that can be instantly chucked away, right, is the fact, well, advertising. What if I look away at the, from the screen then? Do that. Right, you look at television on cable and whatnot, right? Television has shown adverts for 50 plus years, right? People always walked away from them to go do something while the adverts were on, right? They then came back, but do you know what? Co TV companies still got paid for those adverts because that's how advertising works. If you're driving along the road, you don't close your eyes when there's an advert at the side of the road, do you? I should fucking hope not. But again, the people that advertise there, on the sides of buildings or whatnot, the people still get paid for that, no matter what. Because that's how they fund it. They fund whatever it is that they need to. And when it comes to YouTube, for you to be able to access YouTube, why is it the only thing that people think, oh yeah, that, that's not piracy. It's piracy, end of discussion. Now, whether it's moral piracy is a completely separate discussion. But by definition, if you're, yeah, exactly. Like, it's piracy no matter what. Because you're um, bypassing that advert, I people use recorders, scroll through them, but those adverts have already been paid for and whatnot. Those adverts are paid for on the live TV and whatnot. The problem is, by definition, it's still piracy. The pro YouTube as a service is offered for you, but yeah, it's good to some degree. It's not the fact that people are blocking the ads that bugs me. It's the fact that people that block ads and then say it's not piracy, they're just ineducated mor mor bleh bleh. Ineducated morons. Yeah, it's ironic that I've said that whilst also fucking up my words. Anybody that says that using... Cause by definition, it's piracy. Now, wherever... Yeah. Now, whether you agree, here's the thing. It's where your moral line is for advertising. YouTube, Cranberry Sprite is the best advertising. That's great. It's wherever your your line comes for moral piracy. You know the Peter advert. They had. Where do you draw the line? It, it was a funny meme, and it was basically like, went from chickens, pigs, whatnot, all the way up to like horses and dogs and cats and whatnot. Um, and the meme was like, ah, here's where I draw the line. And it was obviously like your typical pig, and then it stopped at horse. Um, that's very similar with the piracy discussion. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.